Alright, well, hello viewers, and welcome to Galactic Civilizations 3. I'm your host, Pupiju Chu, and welcome to the start of a new Let's Play series. And well, today we're taking a look at a 4X strategy game coming from Stardock Entertainment. And well, Galactic Civilizations 3 here is, uh, it's in it's in very late early access. You can pick it up on Steam right now, but, uh, may, well, May 14th will be the official release of the game. And, well, we're currently playing the closest thing to the actual release, the uh, the press review version for the game here. So, uh, with that said, let's take a look at, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about what Galactic Civilizations is all about. And this was a very, very, uh, well, innovative line of games. And uh, speaking to it, right over here, it has a whole bunch of fully featured um, sections of the game that we'll, we'll of course, uh, better show than speak about. But more so, it actually has a, has a 3D ship designer where you can, you can build your own, uh, well, you know, units to use um, you can customize what type of weapons they use and uh, what uh, what the ship actually looks like as a 3d model and you can kind of use them in these uh, well real-time 3d battles uh, so it's very very intriguing just off of that note some of the some of the other you know innovations we see in a lot of 4x games just simply because I mean the series has been on uh, ongoing for a long time and well Galactic Civ 2 came out in like 2006 or so so it's been a so it's been a, a long overdue sequel anyhow I figured the game here and or, uh, I don't know if my recording program works during these uh, interludes, but uh, anyhow, we'll just hop into the game and go from there. So the game comes with eight of these races, and actually you can make your own, so that's what I did here. Uh, so I made uh, this race over here titled The Human Outlanders, and I think we'll make a, a separate video showing you guys how to make the races as well, um, kind of as an episode zero, so feel free to check that out. And, you know, uh, personally, I really enjoy playing the human races in all of these games. I know it's kind of boring, uh, but with this game, I figured I'd make my own race and kind of stem it off of that, so we made a, uh, a separatist human race, kind of something going off of uh, the idea of the Terrans and oh I don't know Starcraft 2 where it's kind of like a sub subgroup from long ago or with uh, with something like that. Anyhow, the description reads: A long time before the founding of the Terran Alliance, at the birth of human space travel, many were sent into the stars with all too few supplies and all too many ambitions. Those who found themselves out in the abyss with no way to to with no way around took to making do whatever they could. Over time, by luck or fate, this band had made something of themselves which is the, uh, the little description here and how these races work is that uh, you have two abilities that you start off with and you also have a whole bunch of these racial traits that you can uh, that you can choose inside the custom race section right over here so uh, what I figured I'd do with this race is that I'd make these people extremely hardy type of semi-militaristic people but at the same time um, that of course has its costs and with that said they have a bit of a, uh, a penalty on anything diplomatic uh, so let's go forward and so let's take a look at what we can do in terms of galaxy creation. So uh, the map size for this game ranges from very tiny to quite quite literally excessively uh, huge. Um, I think you know what we'll bump this up by one more step because I like playing with uh, with the cluster type of map. Um, so we'll put that onto huge instead of perhaps large. Um, there's four different types of maps, and as you can see, there's an option to load pre-made maps here. And uh, with that said, I think we'll just move forwards and take a look at some of the customization options you get here. Uh, before that, i got to pause the video, do a quick thing, and we should be back. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so there we go. Right, uh, so there's, uh, there's, there's quite a different way, a few ways to win with the game. Uh, we'll talk about uh, galaxy options later on, but they're more or less just how many planets there are and how many different resources there are inside the game. Uh, so there's uh, right around, yeah, there's, there's let's see, there's, uh, well, six different ways to win. You can do your standard conquest type of cultural victory uh, research as well, but there's also a few different ones. One involves uh, really reclaiming things, reclaiming artifacts along the map. Um, you can also use uh, well, diplomacy for alliances, or you can just simply have a timeout uh, setting for the game because the games here where the matches can become quite long. So let's see. We'll have a normal pace. We'll have a normal difficulty game. Um, about I'll bump the game pacing up to. Uh, you know what? We'll keep it on on normal for now. Uh, we'll have some pirates. We won't have too many. Um, and I think we'll have a few minor races. So. 
same game as I had last played, and I think we'll include, let's see, yeah, six races in total, or you know what, we can we can bump up that up to seven, and I think we'll just begin just on that note. So, there we go. Do do do, building map, and shortly, we should be in the game, nice and properly. Oh, there we go. So, even farther reaches, we're playing as human outlanders, and I wrote some, uh, well, background text here for those who want to read it. Um, feel free to pause the game, or pause the video to do so. Uh, but for us, we are just going to jump into the game, and we're going to take a look at firstly the map, and where we can go from here. So, let's see. Um, I chose clusters for the map, so this map should be grouped into a whole bunch of stars. So let's see, it looks like we started out in right around the bottom corner of the map. Um, we're in a very large cluster evidently, there's a bit of a side one over here and a very minuscule one over here. So okay, we're actually, it looks like this is uh, five clusters going off the mini map here merged together. So, um, going over the game just overall, uh, there's a few victory conditions that we can take a look at over here. There's a thousand turns per game. There's a wide variety of different economic settings that we can set up here. Uh, there's a pretty good tech tree here that we can go through. Um, there's a whole bunch of things relating to uh, ideology for the game. Um, just one note, my, my recording program in the game doesn't necessarily function too well together, so we might have a few pauses like that when we're loading something new. Um, there's diplomacy, of course, we can't really do too much here for now, obviously being the only nation available. And there's also a ship designer, which I'm going to pause the video to load up because it is quite resource uh, demanding. Okay, and there we go. So yeah, uh, you can build your ships in 3D like I had said. Um, you can customize the color of the ships, unfortunately, only by going through uh, your, your your race design. But anyhow, let's zoom in. Let's take a look at what we have over here and what we can do. So um, in all 4X games, we've got to set our research. We've got to set up uh, what we want to build right away. And we also start up with a humble band of ships here to send out into the stars. So we will do that very, very shortly. Um, on the side map here, we can take a look at a few graphs, some maps, some power ratings. Uh, we start off with 5,000 uh, cash. Um, looks like 12.5 billion people and our people are slightly unhappy. So that is that. And hang on, the sound is glitching out. So we'll bump it up by one. There we go. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We start out with a scout ship, a support ship, or rather an ex exploration type of ship, and a colony ship to begin things off with. Um, and so uh, how this typically works is that the survey ship is really, really useful in the sense that it can explore certain things in space. The scout ship can't necessarily do that, but it's much faster, it can go a bit farther. Actually, at the very start of the game, the exploration ship that we get, um, seeing as how we have quite a few bonuses for our, for our, for our spacefaring vessels, uh, can actually move further, it can move four tiles instead of three. So, with that said, we'll send them off, and we'll send them off to these uh, unknown stars just to check out the planets around them to see whether or not there's anything worth grabbing there. Uh, so that moves to the next stage. What do we want to build on our planets? And the buildings uh, are especially neat in the sense that you can open up the worlds like this, and you get a lovely uh, planet to work off of. So each and every single one of the planets, with the exception of a few like Earth, are generated here. And this is our capital, or this is our home world. So we have a colony capital over here, and a whole bunch of tiles to build things off of. And now, unfortunately, uh, given this layout, our capital's kind of, well, it's not really in a great location, but there's a lot of different things going on on these worlds. So, uh, for example, there's a flood plains over here, there's a wasteland over here, and it looks like there's a, yeah, there's an ancient wonder over here. And all of these buildings, or all of these different things, will provide you with different bonuses, or uh, special type of perks if you build buildings on top of them and with that said um right now uh we're not we, it doesn't look like we have one for research so uh you know what instead of doing that i'm just going to pluck down a research laboratory right over here next to our capital because if you uh, if you place these two buildings next to each other they give uh they give each other bonuses so that should speed up our research by a bit 
And because you start off with about five, five grand in credits, I'm actually going to rush this building by paying right around 500, uh, well, you know, credits for it. And this is because early on inside the game, um, you have a lot of startup cash to just kind of give, give yourselves a, a head start on where you really want to get your nation to progress. And with that said, I can uh, get our people to specialize in producing um, research right away. So uh, to me, this is a game about decisions. It's, uh, you know, how many ships do you want to build? What do you really want to specialize in? And what type of research you want to do? Because there's no way you can research all of the things inside this game. Um, speaking about decisions, what we have over here is a strategic resource, uh, Dirtanium over here. It's uh, it's good for making armor and it's good for making one of the three different, uh, well, overarching categories of weapons. So with that said, this might be something that plays a role in uh, what type of weapons we want uh, soon enough. So, um, anyhow, taking a look at the tech tree here, uh, your tech is divided into four sections, that is colonization, engineering, and warfare, um, gov and also governance over here. So each and every single one of these, especially the weapons tree, has a wide variety of tech. And uh, with that said, like I, or like I said, uh, there, there's no real way that you're going to research all of these. So you got to make some decisions and you got to make some calls. Um, at the start of the game, we don't really have anything that we necessarily need to focus on right away. So you know what? We'll go with a fairly generic thing. Uh, we'll go with the universal translator here, which will allow us to start communicating with uh, alien empires. So we'll go from there. And I suppose we'll get the colony ship to make its way to one of the uh, one of the one of the stars as well. I don't think I put too many pirates on inside the game, so I don't believe that's a big problem. And I don't think I mentioned this just yet. But uh, one of the neat things that you can do inside the game is that you can designate where you want to uh, spend your 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 planets productive capacities, you know, your people on, really. So with that said, a lot of the buildings you build inside this game don't aren't flat bonuses. So this research laboratory, it actually modifies how much research we do, not necessarily how much, uh, how much the planet produces. Um, we're going to buy another one of those right away, hopefully get that up to 35. And the reason, or the, the thing here is that uh, with your governance, you can specify whether or not you want to put that into generating wealth, research, or manufacturing. And with manufacturing, you can specify whether or not you want that to go into social buildings, aka things on the planet, or military, which is more so things at the uh, the space yard over here. So, uh, speaking about the space yard, we're gonna get this thing to build a constructor vessel, which is used to building, which is used to uh, to build things in in space uh, right away. And it looks like there's nothing particularly interesting, so we'll send the scouts out even further. Where actually, there's a there's an artifact over here, something that the survey ship can pick up, so we'll send it over there. And hey, would you look at that? We managed to finish the Universal Translator, and we can pick up a new thing right away. So, uh, going forwards from here, let's do interstellar travel. Um, on the bottom of these, these little icons are things that the research technology uh, allows you to un unlock. So right now we unlock the policy where uh, we can have open borders with an alien race now. And we have also unlocked a building called the Cultural Forum, which will increase our influence. And influence expands your borders and it also allows you to, uh, well, at one point it allows you to kind of convert alien races if possible. Uh, we're going to go with interstellar travel for now, which will give us a wide variety of different upgrades for propulsion for our ships to move faster, plus a flat bonus of one. So nice thing for us to go through. And hey, would you look at that? Perfect. We found a class 14 planet. Planets range from uh, 0 to 26, though I believe you can go over that in some certain circumstances. Um, anything above class 10 is pretty good. And these plants will have sometimes special modifiers like this one. This is a scenic world, so there's uh, you can get extra tourist income from it, and people there are generally happier. So this is pretty good. So let's make planet fall and let's settle down here. So there we go, your first colony. Finally, after a long journey, your colonists have set foot on an alien world, untold struggle, where effort and struggle are required to get even this far, but it is only the beginning. So let's go and let's see what this planet is all about. And uh, speaking about these planets, uh, they'll have a colonizing event here. And how these work is that uh, you'll you'll be prevented, where you'll be presented with three choices here. Um, how this works is that each and every single one of these choices relate to one of the three different ideologies, and they'll typically do something to the planet. So let's see. 
So the atmosphere of this planet, thick with poisonous particulates, does have a side effect of causing beautiful, even spectacular uh, sunsets. Word has spread uh, of this beauty, a, budget, uh, a budgeting tourist industry has developed, resulting in coughing tourists, ignorant of the dangers, and it looks like you can choose some sort of policy related to this. Um, so you can choose between a benevolent choice, you can choose between a pragmatic choice, it's kind of a neutral choice, and a, and a malvalent one. So it looks like for this decision in particular, you can make it so that you can have more tourism or and less approval or something of that sort. Well, with that said, we're going to choose the pragmatic route for now. So we're going to boost tourism over here by uh, by 30%, uh, but we're going to lower approval by 5%, which isn't a big deal because, I mean, the, 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 the planet inherently produces a lot of tourism income and a lot, and a lot of morale. So this works pretty well towards our favor. But the reason why I chose Pragmatic early on isn't necessarily because of that. It's because you get to uh, now play around with the ideologies and the Pragmatic ones, to me, are some of the more useful ones early on. So how this works is that there's four different categories per each section. Um, and there's five different techs in each and every single one of them. And again, you gotta make a choice because tearing up to the tier five ones are the ones that are most helpful. Uh, but at the same time, some of the ones inside other trees are perhaps ones that you want to grab as well. The one that we want to go for here is uh, this thing right here, the builder one, which will give us three free constructor ships early on inside the game. The other choices are uh, allowing us to build a prepared center. And what this means is uh, is that you can generate these ideological points if you have certain buildings. Uh, each and every single one of these traits or you know trees has something that will allow you to build a building to generate those points. Um, we can be better traders, giving us a free freighter and a trade license, or uh, better negotiators, which I think provides yeah 50 turns of uh, neutrality no matter what. Um, overall, the, st the three constructor ships are, in my opinion, the one that's the best. So we'll go with that. And speaking about, we'll switch off building a constructor ship to building a colony ship over here. Um, you can actually convert colonial ships and constructors on a on a whim for a, for a cost, but it's it's actually better to buy them in my opinion, simply because of the fact that. Uh, the the ones that you you get using this come with very little people actually aboard them, so it makes building colonies a little bit harder. So that's that. And anyhow, we'll rush a laboratory over there. Likewise, over here we will. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Uh, we still have a lot of cash, so you know what? We'll go to this plan. We'll rush another laboratory in one of these isolated tiles. Um, so we get two more done there. Um, so we can, we can, yeah, we can do one more thing on this turn, which is uh, building an orb, uh, a, a space station. So we'll come over here. We'll click command. We'll construct a star base, and we will found the first permanent star base, uh, or hopefully permanent star base over here. And how this typically works is that with these star bases, um, they're they're modular buildings, so you can double click on them, and you can build a wide variety of different things here. So how this works is uh, typically each and every single constructor vessel will give you one module. Uh, we have a perk which will allow us to give us which will give us two at the start of uh, each founding. And you can buy a wide variety of different modules. Some of them are mutually exclusive, however. We're gonna go with a mining ring. And because we have one free one, we're actually going to pass that and we'll save that for later. Um, and what this will allow us to do next turn is that it'll allow us to access the uh, the resources stored inside that titanium um, deposit. And again, that's useful for making better armor and better weapons for our ships. So we'll go from there. And there you go. So the first titanium mine has been found. And we'll start mining a whole bunch of that. And we also have two research facilities going. One of the things I should have done was uh, set this planet up to produce fully, uh, well, just pure tech, really. And we'll set this up so that we can, we'll buy one more lab, and that'll be it. Uh, I should talk a bit about what our, uh, what our faction's traits are. One of the things it does is that we get this bonus called Handy, and we have a plus two in it, which drastically lowers the maintenance of our buildings. And with that said, we can afford to buy a lot of improvements on the buildings for fairly or, you know, relatively little in terms of, uh, in, in terms of downsides uh, here. 
So with that said, we can produce a lot of, uh, well, research early on. And again, because you have to make a lot of decisions on the research portion of things, if you can rush research right away, uh, you, can, you can do a lot of very useful things where you can get a lot of things done early on inside the game going from there. So there we go. We got interstellar travel where people can move a little bit faster. And now we get orbital manufacturing. Orbital manufacturing will allow us to build slightly bigger ships, uh, but more importantly, it'll allow us to buy the the, 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 the resource, the mining barracks. Uh, what the mining barracks allows us to do is, and that's a little bit far away, but I think we'll be fine. What the resource barracks allows us to do is that you'll notice here, now that we're starting to mine uh, Dirtanium, we produce one unit of it, but we can bump that up from to two uh, using that. So we'll do something along the lines of that. And I forgot to buy thing where I forgot to, uh, well, build something that turn on our planets, but that's fine. There we go. So we researched orbital manufacturing for, for practically free because we won't explore that artifact and evidently it unlocked it for free. So that was quite nice. Uh, we'll send the survey ship to do its thing once again. Uh, likewise with the scout, we'll send it over here now. And on the planets, let's see, how many units of uh, research are we producing? We're, probably, we're producing a whopping 66. Um, you know what? We have the cash to go slightly forward or even further with that. So I'll buy one more research building for now. And I'm going for a really heavy research build, as you can, as you can probably tell. Um, but moving aside, we'll try to go over here. And ah, you know what, we'll buy one more over here as well. We'll have a solid research base. And then I promise we won't buy any more for a very, very long time. So there we go. We bought all of those things and we finished another tech. We finished Xeno Industrialization, evidently. And did I buy that one or would I not? Either way, uh, we must have that. So Xeno Industrialization helps out in the sense that, here, I'll open up the full tech tree again. Um, it, it allows us to upgrade our factories and our research laboratories to the tier two version. Um, these ones research gives you plus 30% research instead of plus 25, which is kind of nice. And Xeno industrialization opens up the, the economic and research portions of the game going forwards from there. So uh, with that said, our planets will have to take a while to upgrade all of their labs to the new type, but be rest assured that's uh, quite worth it. Um, for now, what I think I'll get them to do is I'm going to get them to finish up by uh, by doing planetary improvement. And because the, 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 the Terran tech tree is very well balanced, I figured we'd take the time to unlock all of these before going forwards. So we'll do planetary improvement next, which will open up structures like farms and hospitals and soil upgrades to, uh, well, make it so that your planet, your, your plants grow faster and uh, can sustain more people. So, hey, would you look at that? We found two more worlds, two more paradise worlds, but unfortunately no resources apart from the clump over here. Another world. So this would, uh, oh, another resource over there. So that's pretty good. We'll go over here now because I'm pretty sure I can nab both of those with uh, with one, with one, um, with one uh, star, uh, star base. And, and after that, I figured we'd start researching, yeah, basic weapons. So, uh, I figured, uh, we're, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll end episode one here, and I suppose we'll just continue off next time. So, uh, in that light, you know, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in episode two shortly. Bye-bye for now.